Hello, my name is Charlotte Casagasford, and I'm shouting out loud for the homeless. Please help us. The original Food Not Bombs chapter actually started out of the anti-nuke movement in Cambridge, Mass. in 1980. It was people in Clamshell Alliance. They started, re you know, realizing that they could tie hunger, homelessness, poverty to this bloated military budget. Everywhere I've lived, it's been going on, and then all of a sudden, I came here, and there wasn't even food not bombs going on one day a week, which was shocking to us. So we actually just started making it. Food Not Bombs can basically organize anywhere as its own movement. Uh, it's an international movement that exists for, as I said, communities to take care of themselves. And it also is available as a means for people to interact and build up relationships that can uh, pass into other areas. Any people from any different walk of life can come through <laughs> into a kitchen and share food, um, cook together, laugh together, like make things together and then bring it to serve to a community that like may not have that opportunity to get food. I think there's a lot of things that distinguish Food Not Bombs from other food charity organizations, especially here in Eugene. Um, as far as I know, Food Not Bombs is the only secular organization that gives away food that's not the government. Um, we don't preach anything when we give our food. We're just giving people, we're just feeding people. Every other food charity here is a church-run organization and you know I've been to a few of them I've used a few of them and you know they do preach while they give food they do a great job but this is one of the few places you can go and not have to sit through a sermon or sit through prayers or join in on prayers and get food compared to every other food relief charity most of them treat homelessness kind of as a disease that needs to be cured or treats them as poor little children and they need to be parents and raise them up. Food Not Bombs, at least in my experience, has really had, you know, it's not this kind of, we're giving you this wonderful food, it's more of, let's all meet at the park and everyone who's hungry eat. And usually, almost every single time I've done it, uh, people who are getting food, who usually show up, end up helping out. Eating is like a common denominator, something that can kind of unite us and bring us together. It's not, it's not a charity at all. I think that's, that's the one thing that separates it, that maybe making people feel uh, kind of welcome. Charity is kind of impersonal, and Food Not Bombs is very personal and direct. We, we cook it up and bring it back and it's all, you know, privately done or it's just a whole bunch of people helping out for a good cause. Um, a biggest thing for me also is just in the way we get our food, um, just how that whole um, cycle comes about. We actually contacted people we knew at Sundance and they threw down some compost to us and we talked to people at OGC who we were friends with and they threw down some compost to us. And Thread Barn, Sweet Life, some of it's dumpstered from different places. I went to Sundance Foods and picked up some. They gave us some food, donated it to us, and we cooked up a really nice stew here. And um, I also, we had a bunch of apples and some granola, so we, um, no one knew how to make applesauce, but we figured just add a little water, mash it up, throw some cinnamon and sugar, and we actually made some, and it's awesome. It's been happening in my house, actually, in Lorax Manor, the Student Cooperative Association down there on Alder Street. We let people come in and cook. Around 88, I think it was exactly 88, one of the people who started it in, in Massachusetts moved to the Bay Area. They started just doing it up in uh, San Francisco's uh, Golden Gate Park. And they did it for a couple months, and then they made the stupid mistake of asking the city for a permit. And the city denied it to them, and then they kind of realized that they were there. And from then on, they just kept harassing them. You had massive arrests. In 1988, I think it was Labor Day, they had a huge mass arrest that made national news. There was a period of time where people were kind of getting hassled. Could possibly be like disturbing some type of like peace. Um, but the hugest thing is permits. The state and its various arms always become very nervous when someone, or a group especially, decides to organize for itself without requesting permission. You know, I'm inclined to say that 
the reason that the government's always trying to crack down on Food Not Bombs is they don't want people to help themselves. And I think that fundamentally that's what Food Not Bombs is, is people helping themselves, helping each other.